Hi everyone and welcome back to Taste the Code. I'm Bill and today we will look how we can control and dim AC loads using Arduino and this nice little AC dimmer module. And before we continue any further, let me tell you about today's sponsor, which is PCBWay. And through their awesome PCB manufacturing, you can order PCBs for your project for as little as $5 for 10 PCBs. Or you can, if you are a maker like me, you can try and participate in one of their contests. Currently, they are running the Raspberry Pi Pico contest, where you will need to create any project using the Raspberry Pi Pico, and you will get one for free. The contest is active till uh, 19th of June, so be sure to submit your projects and win another Raspberry Pi Pico that you can use in your projects. Whenever we need to control AC loads and dim them, there is a special technique that we uh, that we can use called phase angle control, where we will need to cut part of the sine wave and only provide uh, just a portion of it. So, for example, if we want to, let's say, reduce the brightness of the bulb by half, only only provide half the voltage. When the sine uh, when the sine wave um, moves, we'll only turn on the bulb during the second half of the sine wave, and then on the negative edge, the voltage will be zero, and again it will only turn on for the half of the sine wave. This way, we'll provide the full voltage and and the full current that uh, we can we can. So that's really important when we have uh, loads like this motor here, because if we only cut the voltage to some level, uh, there will be not enough current for this to run. And the way that this is done is through the use of tracks, as we have here on the module. This one is the ST6, uh, STBTA16600B, which is uh, good enough for 16 amps up to 600 volts and together with with the track we need to also use some some other chips that uh, will drive the track what's interesting about the track is whenever we turn it on it will stay on until the voltage is uh, near the threshold voltage which is usually close to zero so if we then don't turn that track on it will continue to be zero for the rest of the uh, of the period until we manually turn that off. And to be able to precisely control how much of the voltage we apply to the to the output, uh, we need to know when that voltage is at the zero point, or uh, this is called we need to know where the zero crossing point of the of the input voltage is. And this module solves that problem by by using an optocoupler and the number on that is um, 4N25 and that optocoupler is dr driven through these resistors and then through the bridge rectifier so it will then uh, see both of the voltages as positive and turn on that actually turn off that LED when some threshold voltage is uh, is uh, detected uh, and the uh, LED will be on for the rest of the time. So each time when the sine wave of the AC voltage is at zero, the LED will turn off and that will uh, provide a signal on the zero crossing pin on the module that we can then read through the microcontroller. And uh, with the PWM signal here, through this other chip called uh, PhotoTrack, we can control and turn on the triac. Um, what's interesting about this module is this is that this is done completely in isolation from the mains. So the low voltage side of the electronics is separated from the high voltage from the AC lines, uh, which is essential for having our project uh, being kept safe. So the way that you connect this is that you provide the input voltage through this green terminal here marked as AC in. So it's uh, live and neutral. And then the AC load is connected on the other terminal from the same side. If you look on the bottom, 
one of the pins goes straight to the output and the other one is switched through that uh, triac and the, the control pin comes from this control chip. And on the other side, we have four terminals. Uh, we have VCC and ground. We have the zero crossing signal that we fit into the microcontroller. And then we have the PWM signal that, we'll, that we need to provide to the chip so we know when uh, to turn on the, uh, the track. And here on the setup, I have AC coming in through the AC in, and then I have a load. Actually, I have two loads. One, if, one is this uh, light bulb, which is a resistive load, and this uh, AC motor, which is an inductive load. So this circuit works uh, with both. And I'm controlling the input signals using the Node MCU board. Uh, this basically can be any microcontroller, but it needs to have uh, ability to act on interrupt pins. And we'll see later on when we speak, when we look at the code, we'll see why that is important. So let me hook this up. Uh, just a second to confirm that nothing is shorted. Okay, and at the moment, uh, I don't have anything here running. And I'll open the serial monitor. And here, the current sketch that we have on the on the board is listening for our input of uh, how much we want to have, how much power we want to have on the output. Currently, this is being set to zero. So if I type in, let's say, 50%, we'll see that the motor turns on and the, the light is dimmed at uh, 50%. And we also have the sketch saying out that we are now at 50%. If, for example, we want to go up to 90%, you can see that the light and the motor immediately respond and we have the 90. Uh, if we want to reduce, we can write 30. And this will go uh, quite low. Uh, so it's interesting how the light bulb and the fan uh, operate differently. With the fan, there is a minimum voltage that we can uh, with, that we can have, where it if we go below that, it will no longer spin. So this is probably the minimum that we can go. And for the light, it's a bit different because we can go as low as 10% and only have that uh, small glow on the on the light bulb. The fan will continue to spin only because it was spinning before. But it was if it was stopped like for example, we can go to, uh, to to zero, and it's now stopped even at 10%. Uh, it won't start uh, until we go to something like, I don't know, uh, 30% maybe, or even more. So you'll see here at 30%, it only barely starts moving, and we can go to, let's say, 45, and that... Um, increases the current that goes through the fan and so it can start uh, spinning. And that's really important for inductive loads. So keep that in mind if you want to control motors with this setup. Uh, you will need to have some minimal power that uh, goes through to the motor so it starts spinning. Um, if we now look in the code, uh, to control this module, we are using the library that is provided by the module manufacturer. And I'll provide links down in the video if you want to install it on your machine. And at the beginning, we use one of the uh, one of the examples provided by the library. So the library is called uh, RBD Dimmer. This library has several examples. We are using the serial monitor uh, uh, dimmer example, where at the beginning we have some clues on how we can connect different types of uh, microcontrollers. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a uh, really required need that you have an available uh, interrupt pin on your microcontroller. And if you're not familiar how interrupts work, I have a video that uh, you'll find link somewhere up here that you can watch and learn how they work. So basically, an interrupt pin is uh, a pin that a signal can um, 
wake up the microcontroller and execute a very specific uh, code without waiting on the rest of the microcontroller circuit and, and, and operation to finish. And with the Node MCU, there are basically multiple pins that we can use as, uh, as interrupts, but with the Arduino Uno, for example, we can only use pin two, and this is not changeable at all. So you're basically stuck with that. So if, for example, you want to use the Uno where you have multiple interrupts, then you will not be able to do so. With the ESP8266, which uh, this Node MCU has the chip, we can use D1, D2, D5, D6, D7, or D8 as the zero crossing pins. And also we can use any of the other outputs as the output pin that will control the PWM. And if you scroll down, you have the, the same information for the ESP32, you have for the Arduino M M0, you have for the Arduino Zero, Arduino Due, uh, and some other microcontrollers uh, that have some specific chips. So at the beginning of the sketch, we have two defined statements where we define the output pin. And this is the pin that will be connected with the PWM uh, pin on the uh, dimmer module. And also we have the uh, zero crossing pin. And in our case, this is uh, connected to D2. And here you can see uh, the connections. The green wire is connected to D2, and that's the zero crossing pin. And the PWM is connected through the blue wire to the D5 pin on the Node MCU board. So next in the code, we specify the dimmer uh, and we provide the output pin or and the output pin and the zero crossing pins as a reference in cases where we cannot change the zero crossing pin. Um, we only need to provide just the output pin to, to the library. And this is, as we said earlier, this is a case with the Arduino Uno. Uh, and then inside this code at the beginning, uh, we specify that the dimmer will be on. And on each loop of the code, we read the value from the serial and we parse that value as an integer. If that integer is uh, is valid, then we set the power of the dimmer to that, uh, to whatever value we read from, from there. Uh, the interesting thing here is that the library will check out the power and if we provide values outside of the zero to 100% uh, range, actually it's one to 99%, uh, the value will be just re rejected and the power will not be changed. And then if uh, that value was changed, we get the current value uh, on the module and we output that to, to the console. And this repeatedly happens so we can update the values as we want. And here on screen, we have the schematic of the module and um, we can investigate a bit more the uh, the way of operation. So here at the top, we have the zero crossing testing circuit, which through an optocoupler is uh, connecting this zero crossing pin to ground whenever this uh, LED uh, is not lit. So this is a, a PMP transistor and it's connected through that uh, load through the AC input, through that resistors, it gets rectified and turns on and off this uh, LED. So that provides the zero crossing signal. And from the dimmer uh, input switch, we control basically the LED of the opto track. And this will then turn on the triac that we have um, on, the, on the output. Uh, one pin on the output goes directly to the other pin, as we saw earlier on the on the uh, on the module, and the other one is connected through that triac, and that signal coming through the opto track is connected on the other pin, and this is what uh, basically turns off and on at the specific rate, uh, turns on and off the the load on the output. If we look it into the data sheets for the chips used at this uh, module. So here 
we have the CT3021 uh, six pin photo track optocoupler and inside we can see that we have a, basically an LED that's connected to an optical track uh, that, uh, get, that then turns the main track which is uh, BTA16 and there are several versions of this uh, of this track depending on the voltage that uh, that we have on the on the output the maximum voltage that we have on the output and the optocoupler that we use is the 4N25 uh, and basically it's very similar to the opto opto track but here it uh, turns off a PNP transistor uh, whenever this LED is lit uh, this module is basically the same version as this uh, dimmer switch that I have on my soldering iron. Uh, I've also added uh, an indicator LED to it that you can watch a specific video for that if you're interested. But uh, here the same circuit, basically the same circuit is done that the turning on and off of the triac is done through the help of a um, potentiometer and uh, and this works well where we have physical access and a person needs to control that circuit but I'm planning to use this setup in an upcoming build where I'm making a pellet burner and I need to control this fan so I can control the amount of uh, air that goes into the pellet burner so I wanted to have a setup where I can digitally control the speed of this fan. And since this, uh, this setup is tricky because of the uh, interrupts, I'm planning in my next video, I'm planning to build a specific circuit with the ATtiny 80 85 that will be dedicated to just running the, the output and this motor um, through I square C as a client to this, uh, to this whole setup of the project that I have. So if you are interested to see that, be sure to subscribe, comment below if you have any questions and I'll see you all in the next one.